So your metabolism quite literally slows down in its most simplistic sense. And this happens from a whole slew of hormones that are secreted by fat that talk to the brain. And I'll, I'll mention a few of them today. But what's notable here is that the body goes into a state of reserve and the fat wants to preserve itself. And so essentially what they have found is that the changes that I have just described may be permanent. And if not permanent, it sure does take a long time. So up to six years later, they have found this to be true. So the neuroendocrine brain changes the increased appetite, the decreased energy expenditure by the body, and the increased drive of fat to preserve itself and to bring itself back to set point is such that for years and years and years, the body will struggle to go back up. And here's what happens. You end up hungrier than you did before, whether you lose weight without a peptide or with a peptide, it doesn't matter. You end up hungrier than you did before. The drive to eat and the hunger signal is stronger. And now most folks have lost a ton of muscle mass. And so they have metabolically really shot themselves in the foot. So if all you take away from this podcast today, the strength training part is non-negotiable. I don't know how else to say it. Folks will end up skinny or slimmer. They will also end up with less muscle mass. They will end up hungrier for at least five or six years. We have data on that. We have fMRI changes. We can see it in the brain. We have actual studies where they did functional magnetic resonant imaging on the brains. And they looked at the centers for hunger and appetite. And these centers were torqued after weight loss and they stayed that way for a long, long time. And some researchers believe this might be permanent and others will say, well, until you get to back to a set point. And if you don't have muscle, you are in terrible trouble because folks are going to go off these GLP ones at high doses, or they're going to go off their low calorie diet or however they're losing the weight. And they are going to come back hungrier with their fat to lean muscle mass mass ratio worse off because they've lost it. You will lose muscle no matter what, no matter how hard you try it. And I have not lost any muscle. I've lost a little bit of strength, which is also a very telling sign, but my strength percentage wise is the same. So if I was able to, you know, deadlift 200 pounds at when I weighed 150 pounds, I'm able to still lift that percentage of my weight at a lower weight. The frustrating part for people is that they don't understand this. And so they don't strength train. They just pound the GLP ones, they crank up the dose, they eat garbage, they don't change any other ways. They don't use it as a learning opportunity to reset their habits and their lifestyle. Or maybe they even just do this with a starvation type diet period, you know, like the, if it fits in my macros kind of mentality where, well, if I just eat one donut instead of 12, I'll lose weight, which if that's all you're eating in a day, of course you will, it's less calories. But the maintenance part of that on the tail side is now you are hungrier, you're more skinny fat than when you started, meaning you have less muscle to fat ratio, your body composition has shifted in an unfavorable way. And now the brain changes have occurred to us that you are hungrier than when you started. And so I've talked to a couple doctors who've been using GLP ones for some time now, and their frustration is that they get patients up to like with semaglutide, the high end of the dose is like around 2.5 milligrams. And now they've got patients asking, can I go up to three? Can I go higher? Because they're unable to maintain that slim figure that they got with it. And unfortunately, there's nowhere to go. They will eventually override that signal if they keep eating through it. You can eat through these. And the frustrating part is that they, if they go off of them, they are going to be hungrier than when they started. And so now they're basically set up for failure. And this is, again, the case whether peptides that decrease appetite are used or not. And this is the really frustrating part for people and for, I'm sure the people going through it. One of the, one of the kind of the crown jewels really in this world of obesity medicine is the bariatric surgery or the gastric bypass, or there's different things they can do to the stomach, whether they cut part of it out or they band it or whatnot. 
there is some success there. And it's not just because they cut out the stomach and the stomach is smaller and it can hold less food. It definitely changes these neuroendocrine mediated responses in the brain. And so there has been some success there, but the, you've seen it. Folks can eat right through that too and potentially end up with a whole host of nutritional deficiencies because you need your stomach lining to help you absorb certain things. So anyway, I'm not saying that's a great idea. I'm just explaining to you why it's a potential treatment on the table. And one of the reasons is this, is that the reason that this perception of increased hunger persists is because your fat cells contain leptin and leptin is a hormone that was discovered in the nineties. And it helps your brain realize that it's hung, or I'm sorry, that it's full. Ghrelin is a hormone that is secreted that goes to the brain and tells your brain that it's hungry. And leptin goes to the brain and tells your brain that it's full. And when you lose fat, because leptin is secreted by fat cells, when you decrease your fat on your body, your fat cells unfill, right? You decrease the load on the fat cells. You now have decreased your leptin secretion. And that tells your brain that you're hungry. So it's the body has these built-in mechanisms to keep itself at weight. The real theme here that I'm trying to get at is don't gain the weight in the first place. That's really the only solution is to not gain it in the first place, but too late. So many people already have, right? I mean, we're looking at a huge obesity and overweight epidemic in this country, huge percentage, like up to 80%, close to 80% are either obese or overweight. And it's too late. The weight's already on. The set point's already been set at that high weight. And so utilizing peptides, utilizing different medications, utilizing different strategies aside from just eat less and exercise more, I believe is necessary. And this is why you've heard me say in past episodes, I actually think when that first 10 or 15 pounds comes on, it often comes on for us in menopause because of our shift in hormones. That's the time to intervene. It's crucial. And the obesity researchers will probably agree with me on this not gaining the weight is critical. Why are we reserving these peptides for folks who are significantly overweight or significantly on their way to type two di or already in type two diabetes, I should say, for them to qualify for insurance coverage, right? And again, I don't, I think the brand name ones are starting doses too high, but I've talked about that in past episodes. What I really want to get at here is don't gain the weight in the first place. That's critical. So if you're suddenly 15 pounds up, 20 pounds up, cause you're, you know, my age or 50 and you're like, what the hell is going on? That's the time where I think a low dose, a very low dose, along with a comprehensive program, including looking at hormones and everything else is critical to success because we don't want that set point to go up. I've already had my set point go up. I stayed too long with that extra 15 pounds on and it wants to stay there. And so now that I have, I've been using uh, microdosing GLP ones for a few months now, and I've talked about it on. A, I did a whole episode about it. You guys can go back and listen. 